Let's go. We'll start with the ribs. This is a really popular food that there are whole festivals in Canada where chefs compete in the ability to cook the best pork ribs. We have decided to cook a pork loin. These are the same ribs, only with which a large piece of meat that's left on it. First of all, we tear off the film for the ribs. It will prevent the salt from penetrating inside. Well, now all this needs to be salted. Pour some color, sprinkle with paprika, and rub it around with your hands. Now you need to soak the chips for the grill, which will then smoke, and as it were, smoke the ribs a little bit. We kindle the coals, pour them onto the grill, move them all over to one side, and on top we pour over some not yet heated coals. We put on the grill grate. While the new coals are burning up, we brush it off. We put the ribs on the half under which there are no coals. We tear off a couple of sheets of foil, roll these into a saucer, and pour the soaked chips into it. We open the grate compartment and send this all to the coals. Thanks to the foil, the wood chips will smoke much longer. Cover the grill with the lid and open the flue vent. We leave this for a couple of hours. Now the ribs seem to be ready. To know for sure, we stick in a thermometer. The temperature inside the meat is 63 degrees, but we need 76. Now we wait. After another 40 minutes, the thermometer beeps, and the ribs are ready. But stop, it's not quite ready. In Canada at the festival, each chef uses an unusual spread, which distinguishes the ribs from the rest, and sets an appetizing crust. Dip the brush into the pack, and lubricate the ribs. After a couple of minutes, turn it over and do the same thing again. That's it, the ribs can be removed. Now they're left with a nice glossy crust. Now let's try to see how they taste. We cut into them. And now you can try. Firstly, the ribs themselves are pretty soft, and with the smell of smoke from their wood chips. Here you can see a pink smoky ring around the edges of the meat. And secondly, these are the most unusual ribs that I've ever tried, of course in a good way. The next one, we have ice cream roll from Thailand. I think many of you have seen videos in which fruits are poured with cream, crushed with spatulas, smeared around, and rolled into ice cream rolls. They are also made from various sweets. We decided to make some Oreo cookies. This is the table where they do it all. It's called a freezer, and it costs about $4,000. Let's try to make all this at home and without this table. We open up some Oreo cookies. We just need a couple of pieces. We transfer them onto an iron tray. For sweetness, we're gonna use some condensed milk. We open it up and squeeze it out over the cookies. Now we need with cream with a fat content of 33%. We pour it out. Take some spatulas and begin to grind the cookies up. Periodically collecting the cream around the edges. In the end, you should get perfectly mixed cream with condensed milk and Oreo cookies. Now we need another tray, a plastic one. This will make the rolls a lot easier. We pour all of our mixture onto it. And we distribute it into a thin layer. We send this into the freezer for exactly 30 minutes. But now we need to act quickly. Using a wooden spatula, we outline the boundaries of the rolls. And we twist them by simply pushing them with a spatula. At first, we helped ourselves with our fingers. But then we got the hang of it and made them very simple. We transfer the rolls to a paper container for the ice cream. And we pour chocolate topping on top and sprinkles to make it look nice. That's it, now we insert a spoon, and our Oreo-flavored ice cream roll is ready. It turns out pretty moderately sweet and delicious ice cream. I think it's no worse than what they do in Thailand, but ice cream turns out to be expensive, since such heavy cream costs a lot. I decided to try and see if we could get an ice cream with a fat content of 10%. These are much cheaper. 
This ice cream will be made from kiwi. We open up the package. We take one fruit out, cut it off from both sides, and remove the peel with a teaspoon. With a light push, we release the pulp. We divide the kiwi in half. With spatulas, we turn all of this into a puree. Also pour some condensed milk on top and 10% cream. We mix all this up and we're left with a mass like this. We pour this also onto a tray. We freeze it up and try to twist out the rolls. Surprisingly, the rolls spun out without any problems. So you can repeat all this at home and get natural ice cream without spending that much money. Also top this off some toppings and sprinkle with powder. We repeated the ice cream from Thailand. And the last thing today is a frittata pizza, which was invented in Naples. We can say that this pizza is the mold for our fried meat pie. Pizza is assembled from different fillings and deep fried. This is one of the favorite types of street food in Naples. The locals just love it. Now let's cook this really unusual pizza. In a glass of warm water, pour a teaspoon of yeast and the same amount of sugar. We give the yeast time to start working. Meanwhile, pour some flour and salt into a bowl. And when the foam appears in the glass, it means that the yeast has started working. Pour them into the flour and knead. First with a fork and then with your hands. Sprinkle this with olive oil and continue to knead until it becomes super elastic. Just like this. We leave this in the bowl and proceed to the filling. We take a stick of salami and cut it first. And then into strips. And some boiled pork, first into slices. And then into strips. We take some delicious hard cheese and grate it. We cut off one slice of a bell pepper and cut it into cubes. Now our filling is ready. So now you'll need some Philadelphia cheese. Dust the table with flour and put on the dough. During this time, it has risen and has become very soft. We tear off a piece Crush it first with your fingers, and then roll it out with a rolling pin. We open up some crushed tomatoes, and pour them into the center of the dough. We salt it first, and then smear it around with a spoon. Now tear off a couple of pieces of basil leaves. Cut them. Throw those on the pizza as well. Now we open up the Philadelphia cream cheese and smear it on the dough with the outside of the spoon. Now some salami and boiled pork, hard cheese, bell pepper, and cover all of this with the second half of the dough. Now we twist up the edge. Open up a bottle of oil and pour it all into the pan. Now we put it on to warm up. And as soon as it heats up, we send the pizza to the deep fryer. Pour some oil on top so that the part that is not immersed is also fried. And you're done. This is how we got a frittata pizza. Let's cut into it. And inside, we see a delicious filling in combination with cream cheese. It's very tasty. It stays hot longer than a regular pizza, too. And it's super convenient to eat it. And if you would like me to continue making videos like these, where we remake street food from all around the world, then just give this video a thumbs up.